Good day everyone, I'm Leviathan DK and I'm here to show you my Moogles World Conquest timeline. I started with the Moogles as Timurids and I had the clear goal that I wanted to do a World Conquest, my first ever. And yeah, I just watched a little bit here and there and gave it my best. For the starting 10 years I used a Roombus guide for how to play. As surviving as the Timurids, I suggest you go watch that out. Before we show the timeline, I wanted to go through some of my idea and why I chose them. I started with administrative ideas to get the first three for mercenaries and the core creation cost. After that, I left the idea group alone until I had finished my third idea group. For my second idea group I went with Influence, where we all had the aggressive expansion impact, along with the reputation, relation slot, and so on. Now that will be removed in the upcoming 1.28, the aggressive expansion, so we'll see how it is. But I finished this one completely, while we were annexing some vassals. Then I went Humanist, for multiple reasons. It helped with the religious unity, as you can see up here, also the unrest, and it also gave some very good policies for negative unrest, removing some of that, and also that it uh, gave another reputation when combining with these. Fourth idea group, offensive. While we were doing offensive, I started finishing administrative as well, because now we were getting some really interesting choices. And we had formed the Moogles, so we had more core creation cost, reduction, and that allowed us to have some spare points. Fifth was Diplomatic, because Diplomatic together with Influence just make it very very easy. And also for the later part of the campaigns when you want to grab a lot of land, the province war score cost is amazing. Sixth idea group I went with defensive for the morale boost, also it had some nice policies as well. Every single one of these six idea groups had amazing policies and could be combined in one way or another. For reputation, mercenaries and so on. I went with a lot of mercenaries, in fact almost all of my infantry is mercenaries, there are maybe 100,000 that aren't mercenaries, the rest is pure mercs, and I was basically doing that from the beginning. Seventh, I went with quality. I was very uh, torn about what to choose. I had considered naval to fight Great Britain, Spain, etc. because they were really destroying my navy in battle, but I'll show you why when we look at the timeline, why I didn't go for that one. And last I went quantity because we needed the admin and diplomatic uh, monarch points to annex and core. We didn't need it but we chose one. Anyways let's go and look at the timeline. We start over here as the Timurids. The opening guide is that you go to war with Ajam and then you try to survive for 10 years. But let's play. We went to war, we took all our cores with a reconquest, then we decided to go ahead and annex Transoxia, Fars, Khorasan. Then we had a little bit more war, we annexed Afghanistan, went to war with Delhi. Now I was focusing on finishing my Persian mission tree that the Timurids have access to before I wanted to switch to Moogle, so I switched a little bit later than what you can usually do. System didn't really offer that much. We had some war with Nogai spreading up, I really didn't want to get hindered, so I wanted to go up real fast. Now we already boarded Muscovy, and that was a little bit problematic, but it was alright. We had an alliance with Bahamas, and we also had an alliance with the Ottomans. Now we switched to Mughals, we moved our capital, we brought over 
the Renaissance by developing Herat, the capital, and then colonialism in Delhi. As we were spreading around, I made sure to take vassals wherever I could. Uh, Hesa is currently our vassal, because I wanted to get down into Africa. That was something I was really focusing on while we just grabbed all the land. As far as India, I was really trying to push over towards Bengal. Malwa was big, and that was fine by us. I wanted to get over, cut down, so we could really get the wars going. Again, QQ, here we went to war with them. We started expanding different directions. Soon we will annex Hesa. I just blob a little bit here and there. I was very close to bordering Ming early, but I couldn't get it going. Now if we zoom out a little bit, we went down here, got some land, and slowly wanting to make our way down here to Africa itself. Just eating up wherever we can. Jagatai, Muscovy, and then we're just blobbing down here. Now we got down to Africa itself, and my idea down here was very, very clear. I wanted to get Marahan as my vassal. Another war, uh, a war with the Mamluks due to being allied to the Ottomans. And here I was beginning to feel the heat because I knew Ottomans was gonna go down here and I really wanted to get up to these provinces so we could border the Mediterranean. Now we have our vassal Astrakhan up here. We were bordering Ming, tagging their stability. Uh, their mandate and then we were just slowly expanding with our mission tree we had a war with Russia co returning course and then we were just slowly expanding everywhere now Marahan we decided to give them provinces I was really trying to use my diplomatic cost for annexing because we were I was really making sure to use that in this game. Bahamas was now starting to become a problem because we needed to expand down to get the vice royalty of Deccan. Marahan is our vassal. They were allied to Kilwa and we jumped down a province. We also bordered Yemen because I just wanted to go everywhere. Later on we will take the Great Hope. There we go, we had a war with Russia. Uh, Astrakhan, we got their provinces, and I believe we got Gazi Kumuk as our vassal. We took them from the Great Horde, who was protected by Russia. Now, if we look at this, 1600, I decided to fire Cotton Country in 1614. It did cause me some problems later on. There we go, we annexed one. And we were down here, annex them as well. It did give me some problems, so in this time I was kind of laying low, taking small wars here and there. I wanted to get over and up. As you can see right here, we have now stopped the Ottomans from going forward. That was really important for us. We took a separate peace deal in the war with the Mamluks. I wanted to get over here and get a vassal, and that became Alodia, because they had a good amount of cores. And we could feed land back after we had grabbed it to begin with. Now we started turning our eyes towards Ming because we were bordering down here. And we had many options and we were very very close to fulfilling some missions. We also backstabbed Bahamas. And we also dealt with Kilwa. We stopped Spain from going any further. Kazakh is our vassal. We took a lot of cores that we could give to them from Russia and we had a war with Ming and here is where I want to pause because this is something I felt was super important for me when we were at war with Ming towards the end of the war I declared on Oirat Oirat didn't have any strong guarantees or alliances so we could very very easily go to war with them and Ming uh, towards the end of the war didn't want to protect them so I decided I wanted to get up and around so we could border Baratia get closer to Japan also have a good border with Russia so we weren't only limited over here 
Also, it meant Oirat was now cut in half, Korchin became our vassal. Yemen down here, we allowed them to block because they were also allied to the Ottomans and we weren't ready for that just yet. And we just grabbed the round so we could try to limit them and cut them off. Now let's keep going. We took some wars up here. I always made sure I had at least three vassals. Down here is also a vassal for Bandar. We fed lands down so we get towards Japan for a war. Here we go. Aid Ethiopia. And then we were just grabbing little bits here and there. Now I was beginning to set my sights towards over here and we did get it. Second war with Ming really cut them off. Malacca became our vassal as well. Bahamas, we were eating slowly throughout the wars. There we go. We took a lot of land over here. They were allied to Mamluks. We vassalized Eldia. Gay returned a lot of provinces. Let them take care of that. Kiwa was taken out. We also made uh, in the mainland and then we got over to Madagascar. We swapped around. Korchin, very strong. Another war with Russia. At this point, I was really focusing on getting over here. We pause a little bit we can see that we are blobbing very very nicely we didn't really focus a lot down here because it was a little bit hard keeping Ayutthaya and Malacca in line if I fed them more land I kept them below the 300 development threshold which I would strongly recommend because the 300 uh, development gives them more liberty desire so we were focused down here. I wanted to get across over to Thlemen. Also, I wanted to get closer to Aragon. So that's basically what we wanted over here. Border Aragon because they didn't really have any good allies. They did have Tuscany and I had set my sights on a few Tuscan provinces over here. While we were just eating Ming very slowly. Japan, Korea and so on. As you can see down here, Hosokawa somehow got released. We didn't release them, but we were very happy that they did because they also later became a vassal. Chagatai, we kept uh, eating away and feeding provinces to Kazakh. There we go, Mamluks, we got what we needed. Clement very closely. We took wars down here. At this point, Ming was really hamstrung. We also took the Viceroyalty of Deccan for 10 administrative efficiency so we got up to 80 at the end more than what you get from golden age um, the 100 percent absolutism and so on so we were slowly going over and as you can see tuscany just barely having one provinces down here and they also had one here and that was just perfect for us because they also had down here and I wanted to get into mainland Europe. We zoom out. Now this is where I actually had to go very very slow because I had been behind in diplomatic tech so we couldn't get the client state and also imperial, uh, imperialistic CB. I had to slow my expansion down quite a bit. We boarded Aragon now. Japan got taken out, Hosokawa became our vassal and we fed a lot of land, Korea was also taken out in one war, and there we go. This is where a lot of things started to happen. Majaha Pit, we left them alone until the very end, because they were actually doing very well down here and they could fight Spain and all the other colonial powers. As you can see there is no France, Burgundy and Great Britain took them out. Down here we had... Uh, took some provinces over here and then we started dealing with everything also up here now as you can see we were slowly blobbing we took a colony from the Netherlands and we were just blobbing we also had to deal with Great Britain at some point and they were really hindering us Tibet also our vassal or red as well Finland fed lands here let them core all of that. Great Britain, we took from them. 
and we were also down here. Now we were really starting to blow up Songhai, got taken, and let's focus a little bit on this because right now not a lot going over here besides annexing. So mainland Europe, Russia got really cut down to size, Ottomans as well. Now we moved the capital to Constantinople and started making trade companies. I just waited until the very end. Scandinavia taken out a lot of land for Finland. Just going around, grabbing here and there. This blue or purple here, Frisa, became our client state. And we were just blobbing immensely. Africa taken care of. We took down here because we needed to get over to all of this. As you can see, we had some wars in Europe, Defender of Faith. I was really juggling it with uh, who was the Catholic Defender. Poland, Great Britain and Spain had some very good swapping around, which allowed for a lot of wars. And Portugal as well. Luba down here is our vassal. We were just blobbing, taking care of everything. Now at this point, there's 40 years until we were done. Here, another one and another one and also another one we had many many client states Poland was really a pain because they had many level 8 forts I should have dealt with that earlier over here we went around so we could go to the 13 colonies we managed to grab some land from Great Britain in a war I'll return to that later Tibet also vassal I Due to the things that I decided to take for my idea groups, I could declare on them for only a minus two stab hit. And that meant I only went down to stab one if I were at stab three. So I never got any disaster spawning or the requirements for them to spawn. Now we just kept grabbing land, juggling the Defender of Faith, allowed us really, really to expand very fast. Tundra down here is left, I believe. Or they just got taken out. This land here is uh, uncolonized land. We ate around. Great Britain is gone. And we left Spain for last. This one down here was a mistake. That was a very big mistake. We cored everything. And we didn't truce break. And there we go. And that got cored in 1797. So I just let the game run out. If we do like this. Actually let's just do like this. Now, for Great Britain, up here, this province right here, if you click this one, then you can actually get some of this as well, without occupying a fort. This province here gives you a minus thousand for not occupying a fort, but this one didn't. So, in a Hebridus, I suggest you go test that out, see if you found the same thing as well. Now, this game... We had some good allies in the Ottomans and Bahamas, so we were free to expand basically everywhere else. Because no one dared to oppose us or really form a coalition over here. In Europe we had a very big coalition with Spain, uh, Poland, Lithuania and so on. The biggest one we had was 800,000 that we had to fight and it was a little bit problematic. I decided to focus on the eastern parts, piecing them out, and then Spain and Portugal as well. When we took control of Central Europe, I took separate peace deals and that made it a little bit difficult to vassalize at some point. I was in minus 400 diplo points, so that cut me down a bit. When we were against the colonial powers, I grabbed islands first. Because I didn't want any for any chance of a fort being built there and yeah that was just really not something that was worth it the colonies were quite easy to take just made sure I took as much as I could down there and basically I left mainland for last of Europe colony power reduced was much better because in Central Europe, we were boarding and we could very easily beat their armies. Now, this was how I got Mughals going. And there we go. So, let's look here. Shah Rukh, we kept him alive for seven years, then he died. But at that point, we were controlling our starting vassals very nicely. 
then we would just kept on going and then here also a very good one Sh um, I want to see for a specific event where was it um, but uh, not Umta. Uh, yeah this one he was quite good we had some decent ones. I never got the Defender of Faith. Actually, the religion screen crashed my game a few times because so many provinces weren't Sunni, so I couldn't really core with them. And just looking at that one basically crashed it. So I never got the Defender of Faith because I didn't want to take it before all the Sunni lands were defeated because I didn't want to call in on any defensive wars where I had to defend and then lose prestige mercenaries way to go with the Timurids when you combine all these policies it was just amazing now as you can see we reached 32 in all of them but we only did that when we were done with basically the world conquest and we checked up just checked up very very slowly all diplo power and admin power was used on coring and conquering except for Diplo we did go to Diplo tech 25 for morale and the end of our navies as you can see we have some irregular numbers that was to get some achievements that I didn't have before and basically it was a very fun game it was very tedious at one point because world conquest is really uh, long when you fight Europe with imperialism CV because you have to micromanage and conquer a lot. Level 8 forts, they are a pain to deal with, but it's doable. And it's more about the mindset than anything else. Now, for the upcoming 1.28, I will try my hands on some other ones. Anyways, this was my world conquest. Cold place up here, Alaska, Oregon, deported Mughals, and so on. I had really fun time playing this game and doing a world conquest which I had never done before. I got the achievement. If you want to see more then I suggest you go follow me on Twitch at LeviathanDK where I stream Europa Universalis 4 on a, regular, on a regular basis. Five times a week basically. Anyways, thank you all for watching this. I hope there were some useful things. Otherwise, comment down below. Thank you. Bye-bye.